What do you think? How will be the transformation happen between our actual fiat currency system and uh, to, Bitco to a Bitcoin standard? How should this play out? So, well, how it should play out is gradual, and it should be okay. something. <laughs> but how it will play out, yeah. You know, I I I would like to be an optimist and say that it's going to be this this stable thing that's going to uh, not be so painful for everybody, but I kind of suspect it's, it's not going to be that. I kind of suspect that like we saw in 1923 Germany is, is when you really saw the paper mark yeah. uh, just explode parabolic, right? Everything up to that was, was very uh, difficult to manage, but once you got into the, the second half of 1923, it became completely unmanageable. And so I would use that as an example in history that, that says that when a currency fails, ultimately what's happening is trust is lost. People are saying, you know what? I don't trust this yeah. thing that I'm holding to protect my ability to buy what I was able to buy yesterday. Hmm. And history has suggested that that trust erodes at the snap of a finger. When, it, when yeah. it's gone, it's gone. And so... I think that that could play out as early as late 2021. And I, wow. think, okay. and I think the latest it could probably play out is uh, 2025, the late 2025, somewhere in that time range is what I would suspect that, that we're going to see that happen. Okay. Uh, in my last book, the book is called The Biggest Crash of All Times. I predicted 2023. So I hope, <laughs> we, sounds, I'm not hoping that it, it sounds like we I'm agree. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, um, I see just no other solution. Uh, do you see any other solution the politicians or the central bankers have to keep this thing alive, to keep it spinning? Or they will print more money, of course. But where is the end? Where's the mathematical end? Well, I think, I think policymakers actually need Bitcoin. Uh, um, <laughs> and they might not realize it yet, but I think in, in time they will realize that it's kind of the thing that's, that's going to save them. Um, and, and a lot of people are saying that all the printing and the, the, uh, the UBI and all that kind of stuff, they look at it negatively. I would tell you that it's, it's actually needed. It's needed in order to transition and bridge the gap into this new fiscal, uh, okay. standard. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I would equate it to like an engine that has a hole in it and there's oil leaking out of it if you want to keep that engine running, you got to keep putting oil in that engine. You're just going to have to do it aggressively. And I would, I would kind of describe that's what we're experiencing on a global scale right now is uh, there's a, a massive hole in the, in the engine um, in, in the fiat. Yeah. In the fiat engine. Yeah. And um, it's just all flowing into Bitcoin and mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's happened pretty slowly as far as our market cap goes. But I think here in 2021, You're going to see, I mean, my opinion is you're going to see Bitcoin go to two to 300,000 in, in 2021, and it might even go further than that. Um, and then there's a potential it could cool off for a little bit. And then by 2025, it's going to, it's going to take the, it, it's basically going to become money at that point, in my opinion. So, so you th yeah, it's very interesting. I made the same prediction in, in the book. Uh, I said uh, we will see uh, new all-time highs pretty soon, and I see, said uh, we will see um, yeah one million dollar at the end of the decade next decade. So um, this transformation to Bitcoin to a Bitcoin standard, what do you will we see total chaos in the society in the political area? So because I, I have a very dark um, vision actually for the future, you know, like civil unrest, perhaps even civil war, because um, if, if you look back in history, these things, a new monetary system goes along with unraveling, with, with crisis, with crash, with war sometimes. I think in the long run, it's going to be um, very beneficial to humanity as far as yes. global, global coordination and cooperation. Yeah. Getting there is, is up in the air. And it, it could be a very dark uh, future in the short term. And it could be, it could be, uh, it could actually transition maybe better than, than we realize. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just open to both vantage points. Sure. Right. Um, I think that uh, there's going to be a lot of hardship for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And most of that's going to come down to um, 
just the transition. If the, at the end of the day, through all this inflationary monetary policy, what we've really done is we've just pulled the future into today. Exactly. Right? Yeah. That, that's, that's what we've done. And if you don't think that there's going to be some type of consequence for, for pulling that much future into today, I think you're sorely mistaken. Um, so there's, there's going to be bill payers for that. Who they are, um, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you who the biggest bill payer is. It's people who, that are holding debt and holding bonds. They're, they're basically going to be completely impaired. They're going to allow for this big reset to occur. There's going to be probably the biggest, and I, and I don't say this lightly, the biggest transfer of wealth the world has ever seen play out in the next five years. And, um, you know, I've had people tell me, well, there's, there's only a few people that hold a ton of the Bitcoin. And so how is it going to be any better if these few people hold all the, all the wealth versus what we have right now with fiat? Then what I would tell them is a person like me who has, who has a bunch of Bitcoin, when the stock market gets repriced in Bitcoin terms, because today I, I, I can't buy anything, right? Because it's, it's this fiat bid that yeah. is taking prices into insanity. But if we move into a Bitcoin standard, like I suspect is going to happen, um, that's all going to get repriced in Bitcoin terms. And then I would, I would imagine you're going to see uh, the exact opposite play out where equities are being offered at such ridiculously cheap prices in Bitcoin terms that people like me are going to step in and do discount cash flow models on it and say, hey, this is a buy. I'd rather have this equity than this Bitcoin. And so you're going to see uh, a lot of those Bitcoins get redistributed throughout the world just yeah. through the prices that are offered through the sale of equity, uh, real estate. I mean, you name it, any type of asset that's out there uh, with excluding debt is going to be repriced in Bitcoin terms and all the Bitcoiners are going to buy that equity and it's going to all get you know, redistributed throughout the world. So I don't necessarily buy into that narrative that we're going to be in a similar situation. I think it's actually going to distribute it um, just through the price depreciation that's going to naturally occur through, through this event. Because yeah. that's, what's, that's what's ultimately happening with Bitcoin is, is all this price deflation that's been pent up and, and basically manipulated and, and almost like a dam. It's, it's holding back all this price deflation yeah. Bitcoin's basically going to be a wrecking ball to the dam that's holding that up. And you're going to have massive price deflation that's going to take place in fiat terms. And, uh, and in Bitcoin terms, you're going to, you're going to be able to buy those kind of things up for a very, very low price. And that's how it's all going to get redistributed throughout the world. 